My daughter, Teen, is having a birthday in a few days. Money is a bit tight, so I told her we can't afford a birthday party this year. Instead, we can buy a cake, a gift, and go out for dinner. She threw a tantrum over not getting a birthday party, but finally got over it. She told me she wanted a peanut butter chocolate cake and a tablet and wanted to go to an Indian restaurant. I told her she was being unreasonable. She knew her brother was allergic to peanut butter. I even offered to buy her a cupcake, but she insisted on having a cake. So I said, fine, you're getting a chocolate cake then. We had another argument over the gifts because I couldn't really afford a tablet, so I asked her to choose something else. Still, she wouldn't choose, so I bought a new phone case for her. Then we had another argument. She knows neither I nor her siblings eat Indian food, so I told her we'll go to her favorite fast food instead. She threw another tantrum, called me an idiot, and said, Fine, have fun then, I'm not coming. She then called her dad and left with him. I've been trying to talk to her, but she only says she's not coming with us and won't talk to us. Am I the idiot for not being able to afford to give my daughter the birthday that she wants? So you said she can't have a party, but she can have a cake, but not the one she wants, so she can have a gift, but not the one she wants, so she can have a meal out, but not the one she wants. Is money just as tight when it's her brother's birthday? You are the idiot. Compromise is one thing. Shooting down every alternative she gave is just something else. No wonder she's going with her dad. Maybe he'll at least give her something she likes. I think OP nulled the allergic argument by saying the daughter could have a peanut butter cupcake while they all had chocolate cake. If the allergy was that severe, a cupcake wouldn't be an option either, surely. What extra blows my mind about the cake is, OP offers to get the birthday girl a cupcake. If the brother is allergic, I mean he hates peanuts, why isn't he getting the different flavor cupcake? Yeah, that's a good point. The poor girl, she doesn't get the gift, the restaurant, or the cake of her choice. It's her birthday. Let her get one thing she wants. The cake would be the least expensive, and you can't even do that for her. Let me guess, her brother is perfect. I believe this is just one part of a bigger issue. The girl requests for her own birthday dinner and cake to be things she likes are reasonable, but OP can't even be bothered to do that, not because of time or money constraints, but because her siblings don't like those things. If she can't even get her preferred food and cake for her birthday, I'm willing to bet that she loses out on a lot of things because it's inconvenient or not accommodating for her siblings. What do you want to bet the siblings are step or half sibs? I was wondering about the exact same thing. When I reached the end of the story, where she called her father and left with him, I went back and reread everything. It brings up a lot of questions about family dynamics that were conveniently left out. OP, you didn't give her one single thing she asked for. Instead, you made it all about her siblings. Her tantrum is because this kind of thing happens a lot. You even talk about how your other kids never pull this. I wonder if your younger children have a different dad. It almost seems like you intentionally treat this child differently. My birthdays were always like this, catered to everyone else except me. I just stopped celebrating and don't really go out of my way to see my parents anymore. My dad married Lucy when I was eight. My dad met Lucy at a support group for grieving widows and widowers. They were dating almost immediately after the meeting, six months after my mom died and 11 months after Lucy's first husband died. Lucy has a daughter, Maisie, who was seven when her mom married my dad. Maisie and I never got along. We're toxic together. Pretty sure the reason is we were two grieving kids who had lost a parent, struggling with the loss of said parent. Our surviving parent married the others, and suddenly, the step-parent is being over-pushy and calling us their kid. We're not getting what we need from our actual parents. Lucy especially was bad. She called me her daughter before they were officially married, and she told me years ago that she was saving her engagement ring from her first marriage for me, which was a family heirloom her parents gave to her first husband. I told her I didn't want it, and she ignored me. She even ignored her own parents, saying they wanted Maisie to have it and not me. She was offended they would treat her as less of a grandkid. But it's true. They're not my grandparents, and I am not their granddaughter. Now I'm nearly an adult, and Maisie is a teen, and I don't know exactly how it all happened, but Maisie was told by Lucy that the engagement ring from the marriage to Maisie's dad was being saved for me, as her oldest daughter, and Maisie lost it. She yelled and screamed at her mom that she was her daughter, not me, that her dad proposed to her with the ring, not mine, and if anyone should get it next, it should be her. I was yelled at next. At the time, I was oblivious to the fact she'd yelled at her mom, but Maisie called me a thief said she hated me, said I should have died with my mom instead of stealing hers and stealing a memory of her parents' marriage, and that I was a selfish witch. I couldn't believe Lucy told her daughter she was giving me the ring after I said I wouldn't want it. So then I yelled at Lucy. 
I told her I didn't want her stupid engagement ring, that it was meaningless to me and that she would never be my mom. If she thought the ring would do anything but go to waste if saved for me, then she was mistaken. I told her to give it to her own daughter and stop being such an uncaring mom to her. My dad told me about what Maisie said to Lucy after I stormed off. He told me I piled on Lucy and it wasn't right. He asked me why I had to be so angry about the ring, and I told him nobody but Lucy wanted me to have it, and I was seen as selfish when I didn't want the damn thing and told her as much. He said I owed Lucy an apology and to give her as my mom a chance because he was tired of us being a fractured family. He also told me I was a real idiot to Lucy. I told him that's what you get when two fractured, grieving families get forced on each other. Am I the idiot? It's ironic that this ring is the one thing you and Maisie can finally agree on. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. You are not the idiot. I feel for Maisie too after reading what you just wrote. I understand what the two parents were trying to do, why and how hard it can be, but they need to let it go and allow the two of you to coexist neutrally rather than try to force closeness. Jesus, I cannot imagine what goes through Lucy's mind when she wants to give the ring to you instead of Maisie, as it belongs to her father's legacy. You have the right to have the memory of your mom, and Maisie has the right to the memory of her father. Your step-parents shouldn't be forced into a situation where they want to completely replace the original parent. What a horrible situation. You and Maisie are growing up with such grief. Hugs to you. If I was Maisie, I definitely would have flipped too. Years of pent-up neglect just surfaced. You got caught in the middle and that blows. In my opinion, Lucy got what she had coming, especially since you had already told her you didn't want the ring. However, a word of advice, Maisie isn't the enemy, and you're both old enough to know that by now. If I were you, I'd try to write a letter to Maisie detailing everything, and I mean everything. Good luck, OP. So, I'm a 28-year-old dude who's lived in my house for a few years now. One of the main reasons I chose this place was because my bedroom faced east, allowing me to wake up to the morning sunlight. Most mornings I wake up before my alarm goes off just because the sunlight from the window wakes me up. There used to be a tree line that provided a natural barrier between my house and any potential neighbours, so I never saw the need for curtains or blinds. Along with that, they were expensive for the nice ones. Recently, my neighbourhood expanded, and most of the tree line my bedroom faced was cut down to build new houses. So boom, a house was built right across from mine and their window had a clear view into my bedroom. I've always been comfortable sleeping naked, it wasn't an issue when no neighbours were around, but not long after the people moved in, the father from the house came over to my house and pretty much told me to stop being nude in front of my windows since his family could see inside my bedroom. He wasn't nice about it. He wasn't mean either, just matter-of-factly like he gave me an order and fully expected it to be done like I was his kid or employee. I was somewhat surprised but understood his concern, so I made an effort to be more mindful of my outfit when in view of the window. I stopped cleaning and making my bed before getting dressed. Instead, I'd hop out of bed, walk into my closet and at least put on shorts, then go about my morning chores. That being said, I still sleep naked and occasionally become visible to the neighbours for a brief moment after waking up. The father came over again, leading to an argument between us. I told him I was trying my best to be considerate, but there's only so much I can do and that it's my house and I'm not changing my lifestyle because they moved in. He threatened to call the police and said I was being a menace to the neighbourhood, whatever the heck that means. So, am I the idiot for continuing my lifestyle even though my neighbours can see into my bedroom? Not the idiot, he can put up curtains to block his view of your house. He's asking or telling you to put up curtains so that he can keep his windows open, while you block the morning sun that you wake up to. Just like my grandma, who complains I never phone, like phones, curtains work both ways. If he bothers you again, ask why his family spends so much time looking in your bedroom. What a moron. I think it depends. Is he standing in front of his bedroom window right across from the dining room window? I don't think it's right to assume they're going out of their way to look in a window without any information, really. For all we know, OP stands legs apart to look at the sunrise in front of a sliding glass door visible to everyone. I really think it depends on the neighbourhood, house, setups. I agree with this. If they see a naked dude while they're sitting eating breakfast and can't avoid it without closing their windows, that's an actual issue. They should be able to have their windows open without the whole family seeing OP's morning ritual. I know this isn't for legal advice either, but if OP is in the US, it might also be illegal for OP to do this. You are the idiot, OP. Curtains exist to let in the sunlight and show only shadows. 
Whether they have curtains isn't the issue. They may be in their backyard or outside and can see you. You can sleep and walk around your house as you like, but why must you show off your lifestyle to the world? Stop flashing your neighbours. I'm sure you can solve this problem so you don't flash your neighbours. You act like there's no middle ground here when there clearly is. Sheer curtains, window film, etc. My female 24 sister 29 is in a tight spot. She has two kids. Ashley, young grammar school age, and Matt, a preschooler. Her husband passed away in a work-related accident. I won't go into much detail, but she got some money for his life insurance, and there are some other legal issues going on, and maybe she'll get more money out of it. Prior to the accident, she was a stay-at-home mom, but now, for obvious reasons, she needs to get a job. I don't have a regular job, so I'm free most days. Well, she asked me to babysit for her kids during the days, and she said she'll pay me whatever I wanted. She said she found something that would pay her well and she could keep their house and lifestyle and save the other money for her kids' future and emergencies. I told her that I didn't want to be a babysitter and to ask someone else. She told me that no one else can because her in-laws live in another state, our brother and sister-in-law work too, and both our parents also have jobs. So basically, I'm the only one free during the day. I told her in that case she should send them to daycare, but she said that the kids aren't that well since the accident. She would prefer if they could be babysat by family, at least for a couple of months, until they can get used to the idea of losing their dad. Lastly, she told me if I could at least babysit for her in the morning, then our mom agreed to cut some hours so she could babysit during the afternoon. I told her that what they were going through was very sad, but I stood my ground about not babysitting. That's not what I want now. I told her that was the final answer and to stop calling me over that because I won't change my mind. She cried and called me an idiot. She went on and on about how hard her life is. She said that her kids always cry because of their dad and they need family now and how I should help her when I can. I told her that her kids are not my responsibility, she could ask, but I'd already said no, so she should drop it. Now everyone in my family is angry at me. Am I the idiot? You are the idiot. Your sister and her children have just been through massive trauma lately. It's understandable that she wouldn't want to just send them off to daycare. After years of your niece and nephew having their mom home all the time, they've lost their dad and their mom is going back to work. They're six and four. They don't fully understand and won't for some time. She's offering to pay you, but it'll be short term and you aren't working. I can't understand not wanting to help the family after such a tragic, traumatic event. Not the idiot. Who wants someone who has zero interest in babysitting their kids to care for them full time? It's a sad situation, but that doesn't make OP responsible. She's not looking for something occasional. She wants to hire you for a full time babysitting position, likely at a strong discount, or she'd hire a professional nanny. If she asked for something occasional, I think it would be pretty heartless to decline. But what you've described is a long term trap that will fundamentally change your lifestyle, right? An OP could literally write, My whole family just died in a fire, so I asked my only brother left to watch my kid for an hour while I identified the bodies. People would be like, Your kid's your responsibility. I think it's pretty selfish. Help her out. It's only a few months before she feels ready to let them go to daycare. She's offering to pay you whatever you want. Moreover, if you don't help her out, what right would you have to ask her to help you out if you ever find yourself in a predicament and need help from your family? My 33 female brother has been married to his wife for about 10 years. He has a young teen daughter and she has a teen daughter. My niece is extremely smart and her teachers believe that she'll have a very good future. So to help her, my sister and I have been saving money for her college. Now that my niece is going to high school, we talked about which school she should go to. My brother mentioned that there's an extremely good but also very expensive school that he wished he could send his daughters to, but unfortunately he can't afford it, so our niece will have to go to the same high school as our stepniece. After discussing this for a while, we let him know that we have set a college fund for our niece and that based on our calculations, we can afford to use some of that money to send our niece to that school. Sister-in-law asked if we could do the same thing for her daughter and we told her that we couldn't because the rest of the money was for our niece's college. She thinks my sister and I are both idiots for showing favoritism. Am I the idiot for not paying for my stepniece's school? I saved some money for my niece's school and college and never did the same for my stepniece, who is just ordinary and not smart like my niece, and I do know her well. And like a good aunt, I want my niece to have the best of everything. Also, my brother is okay with accepting the money for my niece's school. Not the idiot. It's already very generous of you to provide for your niece. 
Your sister-in-law and her family should consider what they can provide for their daughter. You're not responsible nor obliged in any way to provide for her. It may be useful, however, to have a talk with your niece and make sure she doesn't feel guilty in any way for this decision. Not saying anyone will guilt trip her, just that sometimes good, sensitive people feel guilty for good that comes into their life. I don't know. After 10 years of girls growing up together as sisters, I think it's pretty wild not to see them both as family. There are missing reasons in this post, either distance or favoritism. Nobody is obligated to give anyone money, but after 10 years, I wonder why they treat the girls so differently. I kind of feel the same way. Not that Opie is obligated to pay for the stepneys, but it's not like Opie's brother only just got married. It's been 10 years, maybe a bit longer since they've been married 10 years, but together longer. It's just odd that Opie and her sister don't have a bond with their brother's stepdaughter at all. She is family, even if she's not biologically the brothers. I mean, Opie calls the stepdaughter not smart, so it shows how little she cares for that girl, despite her being in the family for over a decade. 